morning everyone july 1st grand rising um i suspect i'm not sure but we've probably been through the worst of the which is the best <laughs> of the rainstorms um it probably rained maybe 50 times in the last few days uh three days where we shifted our priority to dam making and swale making and road repair and road prep from uh building the longer or one of the longer term living structures at cob house in wallapini but i'm up soil drinking coffee this is gerard um he's a tipuana tipu they do in dry land environments artificial deserts like the majority of the united states that we call desert um is Gerard greening my portion of West Texas trying to do my small part so things went well um, go for a walk this morning I, I know I haven't spent any time like explaining what was happening because we were doing the greenhouse and the um, the wading natural pool or the first one the very small one and I got my kids and we started uh, well kids not the wrong word they're grown men but <laughs> young folk and youth and they decided you know because what I, I don't treat my kids like their kids i treat my kids my youth like they're young men you treat you treat them how you who you want them to be where you want them to be you know it's just like catching a fly right you you slap where the fly is going you don't slap where they are and you always treat someone you know with the love i think beyond where they are with the expectation they'll rise to that. So I treat my youth like they're adults and I always have. Um, it's a little hard, a little hard <laughs> here in life, but learning lesson, right? I, I, I'm trying to get better at what I'm doing. Uh, I came from a military family. So, no, we did pretty good. I just wanna talk about the last couple of days. So the rainstorms came, um, but just prior to that, I, I gave them the, the options of, well, what do you guys wanna do? You guys want to build a bigger place to live, crash in the, uh, build a bigger place to live, or do you want to deal with the rainstorms? And of course, being my kids, they're like, no, let's take the fight, pop. You know, so we began prepping the roads for the rainstorms. We started making dams. We started making uh, contours and swales. We started doing check dams. And, uh, it's a good fight. Not sure we won. <laughs> but the goal isn't to win. The goal was to learn. You know, and that was the whole point is that, you know, like I mentioned, living off grid, it's not up to you. You don't get to set the schedule, right? The schedule is set for you. Um, this is one doors on swales. And so all it basically is, and this one we just did yesterday. Um, it's basically, it's, it's, I keep saying it backwards. It is a swale that you create out of dirt mounds on the contour of where the water, uh, contour of the land. And so there's a little more prep work I have to do leveling the top and I'll get to that. Um, but this is the runoff. There's one channel that comes down here and there's another channel that comes down the other side. And this is at a higher elevation. So if you can look higher up, I could probably fit two more maybe. And going further down this this mound of earth, you could probably fit uh, maybe another four or five. So that's a lot of work that have it. This is where we are, you know, what you're supposed to be doing uh, in terms of you know rehydrating the soil. And so what that that earth mound does, it, it stops the flow of water down these hills, and well, it slows it down and allows it to seep into the ground which allows all the plants downstream to feed from it. I think I mentioned that before, and those of y'all who are aware of permaculture and especially desert permaculture, I mean, you use swells everywhere, but you use them especially in dry lands, is that uh, it will rehydrate springs. It will refill aquifers. It'll reverse some of the other stupid things that we've done. Not stupid, ignorant. Uh, in terms of basically pumping out groundwater and not replacing it. Uh, we've done a lot of dangerous things, you know, that have gotten us to this bad place, you know, killing off the predators and, and overgrazing, 
creating artificial deserts. But anyway, so it was a good fight. It was a good fight. I'm walking down. Well, I'm going to take a look because I haven't seen it this morning. But these are the crawl marks of the down one of our of the towable backhoe. Got nothing, nothing but positive things to say about the Harbor Freight towable backhoe. You know, she's got her upside and downside. If you can figure out what they are with the job you're doing, it is very effective. Um, but if you try to get it to do everything as, you know, standard destruct, uh, construction equipment, you'll fail. You know, it's basically, it's a, it's, a, it's a poor man's backhoe, which it'll get in tight spots and it'll do a great job. All right, let me show you I'm here. So there's a road coming down. The water likes to use the road as a hill. But that's what water does. It seeks the low point. So, you know, what we've learned over the past few days in which, um, but, you know, we, which was the intent to learn how does water act on this property. You know, so there's a series of check dams going up the dry river bed, which slows the water down till it hits the dam. Um, I actually widened this area here and deepened it next to the road. So, you know, this is one of the areas, this is the area, if you remember from, I guess, a few months ago, last time it rained, this is where the water sat. So, uh, the clay comes down, it settles after the first rain, it dries up, it cracks, creates a liner, and then it holds more water the next time around. So, these are things that, that we're learning. So, we're making that a deeper pool. Over here was a, another runoff section from the hills that I wasn't too concerned with because I didn't think we were going to get that much water. Uh, that did not happen or it did. <laughs> my concern my, my lack of concern was ignorant so we did get a flow here and washed out this portion of the road so we built the road back up here as well as create an earthen berm and sent the water around over in the back to the new pond which um, because it filled up so well we're going to take it a bit serious more serious and make it even bigger so what we did in terms and this is the road repair so this is, a, this is the road that always gets washed out from the plateau runoff where most of the water comes from we actually have two culvert pipes this is what we learned so initially we had no culvert pipes and of course it washes out the road but that wasn't the priority and we knew that was going to happen so we put this culvert pipe right there if you can see that one water came down uh we did not have enough rocks on the culvert pipe and we had a larger flow than expected because we had a dam failure further up um, uh, upstream which I'll show that to you and so because the water came down didn't have enough rocks it pushed the rocks out the way lifted the culvert up it overflowed this area and I'll have to show you guys pictures later I got pictures of all of it and it just washed out this section of the road that we repaired um, the good thing though is that the culvert actually worked well enough that it filled up the pond which is great um, it's a runoff pond so you know limitations for what you can use that water for unless you're going to you know use condensation or filtering or clean it somehow i'm not touching that yet because i don't know enough about it and that you, you're things that you're not sure of that can kill you you need to go very very slow with especially family friends or anyone who drinks the water so i only drink water out of bottles I'm not prepared in any way, shape, or form to drink any of the water from runoff, knowing what's out here. So anyway, uh, so it filled up well. So what we did in the redesign is we have, and I'm, I'm going to try to keep this simple. I was going to show you the big dam. I'll show you that later. Um, uh, I'll probably repair it tomorrow, maybe later today. So instead of doing one culvert, uh, uh, we did two. And here's the reason why. Because as sediment comes down the dry riverbed, if it's all diverted through one culvert underground to the pond, it's going to bring all the sediment with it, which means you're going to constantly be dredging out this pond, so you'll never get this crusted liner. This is the liner I'm, I was telling you about. So I can get down in here and not get stuck in the mud. You see the cracks right there? That's the cracks in the liner. So the next time it floods, you already have a 99% in-place liner and all you need is sediment to go in those big cracks right there. And that actually will seal the pond. Well, it will be the beginnings of sealing it. But if the sediment keeps filling in, 
your pond will be going go from being four feet deep to three feet deep to two feet deep to one feet deep so here's a theory and this is why we have two culverts so the culverts are at roughly the same height we left a little excess on this side and a little excess on this side so we can change the level uh, when the water starts uh, when the water comes water will come out of both culverts the pond will top off and once this pond tops off the back pressure will push the water from going into this culvert into that one and that is the one that goes further downstream so each time it rains we'll get a little bit of settlement just to top off the pond and the excess should just go down the stream it doesn't solve the problem with sediment um, but it certainly reduces the fill of it all right so i gotta get to work today i've already been 10 minutes i'm gonna try to keep these short the insects are just coming out like wild the water is here and so everything is coming to life wolf spiders and uh, i have to be i have to say that uh, scorpions <laughs> which is a good thing um the ants everything is coming out the moths um so it's beautiful out here it's beautiful i don't know if i showed you eh, i took a picture of it i'm kind of let me get a slightly higher elevation i should show you show you the sunrise as i plant my tipu want a tipu every day now I'm, I'm planting something um to start preparing for planting the the swales because you plant on the swale uh and then the root systems feed from that water directly on that swale but then the swales lower down you know are refed as the water comes down here's a sunrise i swear isn't that beautiful that's mexico over there the one thing i, I don't think i'll ever get used to is the clouds out here they just seem fake they don't seem real at all so but anyway let me get to work uh that was just one of the learnings that things that we learned in the constant rainstorms we've been having we're starting to learn how the ground here works why water sits where it sits and that's the beginnings of uh doing desert permaculture got to do your research educate yourself first before you can do it and this is what i was trying to tell my family and friends they didn't seem to understand you can't learn these things in a book you can't learn these things in a video you have to be on your property learning and farming as you go because there are going to be too many things that don't equate what's in that book or in that video that are specific to the place you're at anyway finish my coffee this is gerard greening my little portion of west texas uh july 1st happy july everybody whatever that means <laughs> all right let me start the backhoe you guys have a great day bye